Welcome to our prologue programming tutorial. Today, we're tackling an interesting question from one of our viewers about using anonymous variables with the nth one predicate. The viewer is trying to find the indices of a specific value in a list that contains both integers and anonymous variables. However, they encounter an issue where prologue assigns values to these anonymous variables, leading to unexpected results. Let's dive into the details of this problem and explore how we can address it effectively. Welcome back to another technical video. Today, we'll be going through your question, answering it, and hopefully finding that solution that you need. Guys, remember to stay just a little bit crazy, just like me, and hopefully get through to that resolution. Let's get started. Let's address the issue with using nth1 in prologue when dealing with lists that contain anonymous variables. The problem arises because prolog assigns values to these anonymous variables, leading to unexpected results. In our example, we have a list defined as list equals one underscore one. We want to find the indices of the value one in this list. When we run the query nh1x list one, prolog returns x equals one, x equals two, and x equals three. This includes indices for the anonymous variable, which we want to avoid. To solve this, we can use a different approach. Instead of relying on nth1 directly, we can filter the list to only include the indices of the specific value we want. Here's a sample code snippet that demonstrates how to achieve this. We can use a helper predicate to find the indices without affecting the anonymous variables. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. In Prolog, there's an important concept called monotonicity, which means adding constraints should only make solutions more specific, not more general. For example, when we add a constraint to an anonymous variable, we can end up with more solutions, which is problematic. When we query for all solutions, the program can lead to non-termination, which is not ideal. We want our program to generate solutions effectively, showcasing the power of logic programming. To address these issues, we can symbolically distinguish elements in our list. For instance, using u for unknown values and ii for integers can help clarify our program's logic. With this new representation, we can generate solutions correctly. For example, querying with a list containing both known and unknown values gives us valid indices. This approach allows us to enumerate solutions fairly and effectively, enhancing the generality of our programs. By using pattern matching, we can make our logic programming more robust. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. This example demonstrates how to use Prolog's nth1 function with anonymous variables. The list L contains elements, and we can find the position x of y in L, ensuring y is grounded to the value 1. The results show that L can be instantiated with different values, 
where x can be either the position of the first or the last element, both yielding y as 1. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. Thanks to a helpful hint, a solution for finding the index of an element in a list using Prolog has been developed. The first rule checks if the head of the list matches the element, returning index 0. The second rule recursively searches the tail of the list, incrementing the index until the element is found. And that's it. I hope that that's helped find the solution that you're looking for. And if it did, please, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Every time you hit it, it really helps. Now, I'll see you next time. Next time you need some technical help. And until then, have a good one.